So I always lived life on the edge, unexpected, out of two suitcases, waking up in new cities. Like, and I like that for me, that was exciting. Yeah. I, li- I, I loved that. Hey, I'm Hayden Buchanan, and this is Create Creative Creatives. On the show today, we have the talented Gianna Petrosic. Gianna has toured the globe as a lead dancer in the world famous river dance. Gianna has pivoted her creative energy towards instructing Pilates, blending dance and creative expression with fitness. Gianna and I talk about rediscovering your creativity, the crazy world of a touring production, and how creatives can land on their feet. Gianna, you are a dancer, mm-hmm. Pilates instructor, mm-hmm. and I'm sure a thousand and five other things on top of that. How would you describe yourself in an elevator pitch if you had to describe yourself? Gosh. That's, I would definitely say professional dancer slash uh, Pilates instructor or creator and mover. Creator and mover? Yeah. Do you do much movement direction stuff? Uh, no, I haven't. I think, I didn't even think I was going to be teaching, mm. you know, let alone teaching Pilates, but then obviously COVID happened and everything obviously fell into the instructing with Pilates and I was like, mm, maybe this is for me. You know, it's nice to see Because of enjoyment came out of it? Yeah, exactly. Mm. I always was saw myself as a performer, like performing because I love to give, I love to tell stories and you know obviously tell stories to people for the first time ever seeing something Mm. so then the instructing sides obviously commented like i said it's like run side by side teaching and story yeah balance the right kind of balance you've traveled all over the world as well Mm -hmm. with dance yeah to get to that point what was sort of like the first experience or exposure that you ever had to the world of dance or from what I can remember is what my mum always says is that my sister went and did her first ballet class. I was crying nonstop. I didn't want to leave her, but I didn't want her to be left by my side. And my dance teacher, um, which, you know, ended up being my dance teacher for many years and being like, just let her in, come into the, let her come into the studio, see what she does. And then next minute, that was it. I just started dancing from then. So nice. thanks to mum, thanks to my dance teacher, thanks to also my sister, um, my dance career started at the age of two and a half. Nice. I don't know if that was dancing <laughs> or just me being, being active. That's the first exposure. Yeah, the first nice. exposure. There was an opportunity that came up with um, Riverdance. They were doing a new show, nice. bringing out a new show, and they wanted to seek out talent from all across the world of talent that they didn't know about already. Um, so basically you had to upload a video of you dancing. So you introduce yourself like, Hey, I'm Gianna Petrasic. I'm 19 years old and I'm from Sydney, Australia. And the next minute that's your, you have your dance, um, audition. Mm. You have to upload it and people had to vote for you. Oh, wow. So it's like, yeah, it was like an online, it was an online casting audition. So your video got uploaded to their website. When you say people are voting for you, is this just like the general public? Just general public and whoever knew about it. And obviously like to the, I can remember to the extent some people were even getting like their, getting them, um, their name out on radio and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, wow. wow." I was like, I'm just going to go through word of mouth, you know? Yeah. Um, the judges, um, automatically flew over the top 10 votes. So it was five girls, five boys. And then the judges, aka like the casting directors, yeah. producers, choreographers, um, they chose their top 10 favorite on top oh. of that. So there was 20 in total that went and auditioned and I was part of the top 10 uh, favorites for the judges. So flew over, did that. It was like over a th- three day course thing. All very exciting. Like super intense. Super intense, like to the point where I remember, I remember we did uh, first day of auditions and before that there was like a massive photo shoot outside. So this was in Dublin, mm. massive photo shoot outside one of the theaters called uh, Bordergash Energy Theater. Um, and then we did the whole auditions throughout the whole day. And then after that, they were like, you, 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 you're coming on TV tonight. And we were like, what? <laughs> so it was like myself <laughs> and like three other guys, we got, um, we, went, we went on the late, late, late show mm-hmm. in, um, in Ireland. So then that happens and after that, you know, that, that was also really like, is this really happening? And then next day you wake up, there's a whole other day full of auditions and there's cameras there because they were doing like a documentary for it. So there's like cameras, people ask you questions and like. So it's almost like you're a reality star all of a sudden. It was crazy. And then like, yeah. so my sister went over with me as well. And it was like this whole story. It's like she flew herself over and um, they were like two sisters from like Australia. Like, you know, would it be a dream come true if you, if you got into the show together? So it was like this whole sister role play thing and next minute like um so that all finished then a couple months went by and then we found out we got in and then long story short we got into that show and then went on to Riverdance afterwards and did so many other wonderful things so how long were you a part of the cast for 
with Riverdance. Um, so it was Heartbeat of Home. It was the show I was with for the first like year and a half. And then we went to Riverdance and back and forth with Heartbeat. So a total of about eight years. A few of us girls got asked to audition for the female lead role. And I remember we started our first um, rehearsals in San Francisco. And it was like five of us girls learning uh, two routines, obviously going for the one role. Um, so you're all learning it, all helping each other out just well, to compete with each other? Well, like you'd like to think helping out, oh. you know, like, yeah. This isn't you know what it's like. story from well, someone else. No, there, well, no, like you'd like to think helping out, but obviously everyone wants to help out each other. But at the end, at the end of the day, they were in it for themselves as well because they wanted the role, including my sister was um, one of those five girls too. Um, so that was a long, studious um, process. Mm. Um then we got to the point where we auditioned for the role in front of our director, producer, dance director. And they obviously, like there was cameras. They, we had to do it like three times. And there was like, one like shot was like up close in our face. The other one was like further away. So obviously just to like- You do it three times for the camera, not because you had to do it three you know, times. No, no, yeah, exactly, yeah. for the camera. Um, so the following year we were in Denver and my sister and I got to do our lead performance role. So she did it in the morning, the matinee, and then I did it in the evening. So you had shifts. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. so like um, what happens is you, there's three girls, three boys, so three female leads, three male leads, and what happens is we rotate that. So um, unless obviously someone's injured, sometimes you might have to do a little bit more. Um, the study element of it all. Yeah, it's yeah. all even out. So we rotate as well, um, just have a bit of light, light and shade in the, cl- the cast and also showcasing everyone else's individuality and um, talent as well. Nice. When, how did you find Pilates? What, what was the sort of, was it just classes that you went to and enjoyed or mm-hmm. was that something that like you had a bit of an aspiration for always or was it the choreography and the mix of it? What was what got you there? So obviously Pilates, yoga, that whole influence has always been um, part of the dance scene. So obviously when it comes to like stretching, cooling down, um, technique, it all kind of intertwines into one thing in so it always was implemented into my dance routine. But like I said, never did I think I was going to be a Pilates instructor. And then next minute, hey, mm. I'm a Pilates instructor now. Um, at the time before that, we had a – in Dublin, um, we always dance in our winter, their summer. They have like a residency there. Mm. And they started bringing in an alumni, alum, basically um, dancers back from years and years ago in the show. Oh, and they would – uh, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would, um, we held this, it was like once, it only happened once um, each, each summer and it was about four of them and they would talk about their time with the show, their experience and what they do now, how they, how they um, felt when they finished talk, what their That's challenges so were. Yeah, and then basically it was like, you know, this is how, this is how we dealt with it whether it was good or bad, this is what we've done now and this is what we can provide to you. Did you Just, find it was a massive, like, it's a lifestyle change? A hundred percent. Like, I remember um, one of the girls was talking, I remember finish, I was crying at the end of the thing because I was like, a lot of it, of it I could relate to and whatnot, you know, them being like, she was like, I felt lost afterwards. I felt unsure of who I was as a person, my identity in society, you know, because, you know, you're so used to being in this bubble. Yeah. 24 7 that once you that bubble pops and you're forced to leave it or you choose to leave it because it's the right time you almost feel like you've lost your identity because you're with these people 24 7 eat sleep you name it you see it, you basically are a dysfunctional family <laughs> then all of a sudden it stops you know and that's something that i went through when covid hit i could relate to that obviously my bestest mates are from all over the world you know canada um, north america uh Russia, um, Spain, the list goes on. Yeah. And then having been forced to be like, bye, don't know when I'm going to see you next. You know, that's pretty bizarre. Yeah. Um, two years ago on tour, I decided to do my personal training course. A few of the guys on tour had done the same one as well. And I was like, you know what? You know, if I can't dance, maybe I'll go through the, on, to the fitness side of things because I enjoy, regardless, moving my body, you know, if it's something I need to do for the rest of my life is move in a way somewhere or another I need to either be creative by moving or I need to be physically moving it's funny that you say that because I spent a fair bit of time during lockdown trying to work out what it was that I was going for Mm -hmm. and again like there's always these these titles that you put on things I want to be creative director photographer videographer Mm -hmm. or like lead dancer at 
this production. Yeah. Or like, but then it's like you almost have to distill it down to like, what do you want to do every day? Exactly. So for me, that was I want to make things every mm-hmm. day for you. It's move your body. Every yeah. Day. It's like it's getting it to that simplified version where you can almost like you can be happy because you just got to do that. Yeah. I think that that was a big realization moment for me. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's important to get. To yeah. That point. And when I don't move, I feel like it just my energy just goes down mm. to the ground. And, and like moving my body can be anything. Like it can be making things. You know, moving like just being active, active physically, emotionally, creatively, all that kind of stuff. So I decided, I was like, right, I'm going to finish off my course. It's, I've only, it's only taken over two years, you know, because life happens. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I've got the time now. I could continue to sit down on my ass and feel sorry for myself, continue yeah, ordering, like in literally. Yeah, just, I do that too. Yeah, <laughs> just like. Control. You play coach for yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. More so as well, just like, um, I was just like at home still. I obviously was at home living with mum at the time. Mm. My sister had moved back in as well. And I was like. I can't live like not that I'm saying I can't live there but like for my own happiness I was like I am ready I've already moved out of home nine years ago I need to actually properly move out of home now and that that's going to bring me happiness so I was like right finish off my personal um, training degree so I got that done and at the time I was um, I had a friend of mine who she still lives in Melbourne as well and and she was like babe you should like um, you should definitely like hit up like you know KX you know, they'd love you, your dance background now with your PT background that you've, you, you know, you've um, completed that. They'll take you in a heartbeat. And I was like, oh, I don't know, parties. I never thought I was going to be an instructor. It's never been in my books. Like I've always either wanted to be like Good dancing or like I said, like, you know, making stuff because I was at Unity doing screen and sound production. So I always like either being in the spotlight or being behind the things, making things. Um, Cause I've always had that creative outlet, which I loved. And I was like, I don't know, I don't know. And then I remember then being at the hairdresser and the next day I was like, I need a job. <laughs> I need a job. <laughs> Just applied for it. And then like literally an hour later, I got an email back being like, yep, let's have, to have a meeting tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. Sat down. They're like, cool. Yeah, yeah, they were like, we need trainers. You sound great. Um, you know, we'll pay for half your, we'll sponsor you, pay for half your training. It's a six week like academy course. And that's it. So I was like, sweet, done. And then that, at least that gave me structure. So then yeah. I was like, right i've got now something to study again and i go into town now these two days of the week that's my thing you know mm. boom <laughs> funnily enough i had never done a class where i was teaching never <laughs> i was like have you done class before? i was like yeah i've done one that's great it's great and i had never done one before in my life like reform i was like i've done reform before like years ago but i was like i hadn't actually done their thing i was like yeah i've done it. i've done it oh this is a perfect <laughs> record too so oh, no they know they know <laughs> But like, obviously, and then I went into the class. I was like, this is, I love, I like, I like this. This is fun. I can see myself teaching this. So went on to that. And then ever since that, it's just been a progressive thing, you know, getting more qualifications, um, doing mat work stuff. And um, what I've learned more so, especially this year, is to be present for like cl- your clients. So like- To be here now. To be here, yeah. And if you're, if you're not there, they'll realize as well. Mm. And it's the same thing if you're doing a performance. Like if you're not- fully 100% in that moment someone in the audience is going to recognize that too they're going to read that they're like "Mm, this isn't great yeah Yeah, same thing when you're teaching didn't choose to come home Mm. kind of forced like everyone else in the world was forced to do something they didn't want to do um but yeah so we were at New York we were in New York at that that pinnacle week pinnacle week in March we got to Radio City Music Hall. So we were mm. meant to have a full entire week at Radio City Music Hall. Um, we were able to sneak in three performances. Um, was it? Yeah, just three. Thankfully, I even I was very fortunate to have um, the opportunity to dance my lead show there. And even more fortunate to have my mum in the audience as well. Um, and I remember that after I danced my lead show that, at Radio City, I was like, I'm done. Like, like after this, I was like, I'm happy. I don't care what happens after this now. Like I just danced at Radio City Music Hall. Like what more? It's big tick. Exactly. Yeah. Any kind of dancer in the industry, whether depending if you're an Irish dancer, if you're a musical theater, if you're a ballerina, opera singer, comedian, actor, whatever it is, get into Radio City Music Hall. That's a big thing, yeah. you know? The Tony Awards are there. Exactly. I remember walking on the stage. I was like, oh my gosh. Like people like, like big time people have stepped on this stage. Like, you know, can't even explain it um but yeah so that happened we got forced to send 
um, we were forced to be sent home and that was kind of like that limbo thing was like what's going to happen it's just, yeah we'll call you in two weeks when this is over yeah it was yeah. like this could be a two week amount of thing this could be a two month thing could be a two year thing could be a two day thing we don't know and obviously them not knowing and us not knowing it obviously was a little bit frustrating at the time but you can't control things like this yeah. you know where do you think you went right in your like development as a dancer and where do you think you sort of had the pitfalls so obviously being a dancer there's a lot of injuries um sometimes people are fortunate enough to go through their dance career not having a single injury or sometimes they have something very minor and it doesn't really affect them um but sometimes people they're continuously injured uh, i'd say a few setbacks for me would have been um, when i was going through puberty i had a lot of issues like with my um with like my bones and stuff and whatnot. So I was always constantly getting injured. It was lots to do with like my thyroid glands and whatnot. And me at that age, I just never, didn't under, I didn't really quite understand it. And I'm already quite a bit of a klutz. So like that doesn't help either. You got to take that time off. You need your body to recover. At a young age, you're not quite entirely sure why you have to do that. Um, and then obviously that plays a lot with your mental health, thinking like, am I going to come back stronger? Am I going to be just as good as I used to be? Um, though coming with age I learnt especially touring on the road when I first started touring I was like yeah I can do anything I'm invincible I'll say yes to everything and then it got to the point like obviously as you grow older you also mature and I think that maturity also comes with experience and it got to the point where you're like you know I need to listen to my body I need to if I am injured um, or if I am tired or I'm drained physically mentally emotionally that's going to play a lot on my performance it's like another element of discipline yeah Not just like that top line stuff it's like the in the practice yeah you definitely need thick skin like whether if you're an um a dancer uh an athlete any like any i think in anything that you do you need to have thick skin but um i learned that it's okay to step back and say no when you're not feeling 100 percent. because mm. if you don't step back and say no and you push yourself that's when things would get worse or like challenges that i definitely faced as well personally i definitely found that like even in my own career in creativity it's sort of like i especially from the age of like 22 25 mm -hmm. i was always like late night edits my i was always like that mm -hmm. 2 a.m was like i was the most awake and mm -hmm. i could like focus the most then but then now that i like have shifted out of that age to much older I need different times and like I have I'm now at the point where it's like I'm so dead by two o'clock mm -hmm. at night and if I'm up I did something really wrong in preparing my day to be at that point because I'm now having like a morning peak and an evening peak and mm -hmm. that midday lull but I feel like it's again so listening to your body I was so used to and I almost, I almost built a bit of like identity around being like the late night hustler like mm -hmm. this is when I get my edits done and so yeah. I, I would kind of push off those things to that time of night yeah and I would always push the hard work and say, like, no, I can't do anything until everyone's asleep. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and then I kind of like baked into my identity, like, no, this is what I do. Yeah. And I found that really hard to, like, like work myself out of that sort of um, frame of mind. It wasn't really until COVID sort of lockdowns happened mm -hmm. that I was, like, forced to all of a sudden be doing nothing. And, mm -hmm. like, and I also, I'm sure you're a bit like this too, yeah. fill up your time with anything and everything you possibly can. Yeah. Because you've always got to be busy. You've always got to be doing something. It's like... I'm either really, really busy or I would do nothing. There's, n It's like one extreme on to the off. next. Yeah. Okay. It's like, I would happily do nothing and be so unproductive or I'm like, I cannot stop. I'm, on, I'm like, oh, oh no, mm. pilot. it's like crazy. It's funny, like all the creative people that I, I've talked to, whether it be friends or on the podcast, it's very much like there's an intensity mm -hmm. to the creative industries. And it's not because the industry is intense. It's because the people themselves are intense about whatever their craft is. I think yeah I, I don't know what it is it's like it shows itself in different ways but yeah I think that the intensity is sort of like comes with the territory mm -hmm. it's definitely there I don't know it's like a, a it's kind of like an obsessive kind of mm. creativity nature it's like once you get fixated on something it's like you can't stop it it's like it's like a kick yeah in a way it's a, it's yeah. a weird kind of drug type thing exactly yeah now you're doing a lot of teaching and it's, I guess, mm -hmm. a lot more athleticism rather than structured dance and having mm -hmm. a routine, having a cast, casting calls, like mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. How have you found the shift now with like finding creativity? Because I'd say 
correct me if I'm wrong, but you're doing a lot more Pallavis than you are dance these days. Yeah, How definitely. do you still bring the creativity into something like that? Obviously, I'm not getting that energy exertion out that I normally do on stage. Mm. I find that I sometimes can be a little bit too, like, energetic in my class. Like, you know, pumping the music up or, like, I bring a, the performance to my clients inside the studio. Um, I'm a big music person, so I t- pay close attention to detail with my playlists Mm -hmm. so I actually will sit back and like you know um carefully structure out a playlist just for classes because I'm like if I enjoy it they're going to enjoy it too you know there's nothing worse than going to a class that's got a boring playlist you know um but yeah I think I definitely I did go through a period um when I started uh, teaching where I kind of lost that bit of creativity like being so focused on like writing up my class plans and that like work was the only thing that was like important to me not having a social life things like that and then I was like you know what I need to enjoy this and like instead of making it a chore I should be loving my job not it shouldn't yeah. be a chore depending on the tour like you'd mm. be there for a week or you'd have like a bus journey like if it's like Europe you do like a show travel show kind of vibe so I always lived life on the edge, unexpected, out of two suitcases, waking up in new cities. Like, and I, like that for me, that was exciting. Yeah. I, li- I, I loved that. And then when I came home, I, I would never be home longer enough than, the longest I, w- I probably was home for like, was like three or four months mm. out of those eight years. But then it'd be like, maybe like two weeks here, things like that, or a month. When I came home and then COVID hit and everything, it just was like a massive, like slap on the face. Yeah. like first two months I'm like a lie felt sorry for myself probably drunk away too oh much alcohol God. then I was I would <laughs> sleep because again like all my freelance work dried up yeah and so it was all these people being like yeah yeah we'll call you in two weeks it was again the same yeah. sort of thing and then I just remember I would and I think only people from New South Wales would get this reference but I would wake up at like 11 o'clock mm. make a coffee and have like coffee with Gladys on the TV nice and then remember Gladys I don't know <laughs> but then like after that was all done I kind of like sit there for a good 10 minutes being like what now? What do I do with my life? Mm-hmm. And it was like, I, I, I didn't have any creativity yeah. in that moment, which was actually in a way kind of nice to shake me out of that, like yeah. that way of doing things that I was before. Yeah. I bought disco lights for my bedroom. Oh yeah. My sister walks into the room one night and she was like, what word? I was like, welcome to club G. Yeah. perfect. <laughs> Literally. And then I use I also frozen Two got me through. Oh really? Frozen that was two. A pleasure? Yeah, got me through um, like the first first lockdown, mm. when, like in twenty twenty. And for some reason, I don't know, just like really hit hit a spot. So now I used to have like my disco light set to blue, and I'd watch Frozen in my room. It was like the perfect setting. Yeah, my sister was like, "What is going on here?" Yeah. I was like, "I don't know. Like, I just I just need something, you know." If you were to talk to your younger self, like, what would you say your advice to your younger self would be? based on everything that you've accomplished so far? Um, I would say show up. Just continue to show up, even when times are hard, when you feel like you can't see that light at the end of the tunnel, Mm. when you're unsure, when things get dark, show up still. Even when things are going amazingly well for you, continue to show up because sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, I just had one win. I don't have to work hard again. No, no. Commit. Mm. Don't take the easy way out. Don't be afraid to challenge, take, you know, to take those challenges. At times when I was younger, I used to take challenges as a weakness. Be like, oh, I feel a challenge to you. That's a sign of weakness. Mm-mm, no, that's a sign of power. Mm. So the reason why you're in this position is, is because you can do it, not because you can't do it. Yeah, the opportunity so, wouldn't be at your doorstep if you weren't ready. Exactly. For um, would I say anything else to my younger self? Would I relive anything? Absolutely not. I wouldn't want to tell my younger self, uh, maybe next time do this again. No, things happen for a reason, good or bad. And like I said, regardless, just continue to show up, learn from the mistakes that you ch- like, that happened and then grow from those mistakes and become a better version of yourself. I'm probably one of the very few people that they go I enjoyed my lockdown didn't like the fact that I couldn't actually go see my family when I lived in the same state as them for the first time in like nine years because I was out of the radius but like I was able to work from home so I was teaching online classes like zoom with work doing my own as well and because we were also allowed to go out I was teaching privates outdoors as well so I was obviously still stimulating my brain in that way so I was still keeping 
active A, physically active, mentally active, creative in the sense that I was creating uh, programs for people to make their days better. Nice. Um, so obviously keeping their mental state and their physical state of health active. And as well, I did not, here's a fun fact. I did not order a single um, Uber Eats the entire time. That's, I cooked, that's, that's, that's a good brag. I, I cooked the t- entire time. That's a good brag. I know. That's a good brag. Hey, and thanks for watching episode two of Create Creative Creators. If you want to follow Gianna on any of her socials, there's a link in the description below to do just that. In the comments below, I would love to know if you've ever had to redirect, reinvent, or pivot your creativity in any way. All right, I'll see you next Tuesday.